Horse meat from here is sent to the EU and Switzerland. The Bouvry feedlot near the slaughterhouse has space for around 10,000 horses. The American Journal of Veterinary Research writes about horse meat production in Canada. American horses represent about 50% of the horses slaughtered for food in Canada. The feedlot is of industrial proportions. There are pens upon pens with roads for the feed trucks in between. Horses from the USA have to stay here for six months. This is required by the EU and is intended to eliminate drug residues in meat. The horses are fattened up while they're here. This has consequences for their health. We've visited the site many times since 2012. Every check has revealed major animal welfare problems. Animals suffer in crowded conditions. August 2022. A conspicuously thin draft horse is lying on the ground. We ask for an assessment from animal welfare expert Professor Stephanie Kremer of Justus Liebig University in Gießen, Germany. It could be a stage of chronic laminitis, which is a painful hoof disease. Such horses usually lie down, alternately stretching and bending their legs away from their bodies and retracting them. Their condition becomes increasingly apathetic. This horse is barely responsive to social contact. The condition is extremely painful. The animal should be euthanized. Laminitis and other diseases are far from the exception at Bouvry. Official inspection reports by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, CFIA, reveal frequent and serious animal welfare problems at the slaughterhouse. October the 6th, 2020, a horse collapsed after unloading. October 6, 2020, a horse was completely lame. January the 7th, 2021, a downer was dragged from the trailer and left to suffer for eight hours before being euthanized. March the 8th, 2021, a mare with laminitis and severely overgrown hooves was delivered from the Bouvry feedlot. April the 21st, 2021. An employee attempted five times to shoot a horse in the kill box due to the use of an unsuitable rifle. April the 22nd, 2021. CFIA found four out of 12 heads on the slaughter floor with more than one bullet hole. July the 20th, 2021. Five horses were significantly lame. One collapsed in the alleyway. One collapsed in the pen and got caught under the fence. A Bouvry employee is very clear when speaking to the CFIA inspectors. We've been dealing with this crap for years. You couldn't say we haven't been warned. The world of Bouvry looks very different to Swiss importer skin packing. We import the horse meat directly from Canada. We source it mainly from the Bouvry farm in Alberta, which is without a doubt the most appropriate, respectful horse breeding farm in the world. The horses there live in semi-freedom. On 17th February 2022, the CFIA temporarily revokes Bouvry's slaughter license. In addition to the slaughterhouse and feedlot, Bouvry's realm includes the horse collecting station in Shelby, USA. That's where the US horses are temporarily stored before being exported to Canada, guaranteeing a steady supply. Industrial just-in-time production. This is how things looked in 2019. The collecting station was closed in September 2022. August 2022, back in Canada. We check the feedlot pens and discover a black horse whose posture indicates pain. As always, we find injured and sick horses. The slaughter horses are deprived of care. It's obvious from their hoofs. An old problem with severe consequences for every single horse. Neglected hooves cause pain, joint problems and inflammatory conditions such as laminitis. With every pound the horse gains, the pain gets worse. Since our first on-site investigation in 2012, we've been haunted by images of dead mares and foals.
We find pregnant mares every time. Some arrive pregnant. Others are mounted by stallions in the pens. The slaughter of pregnant mares seems to be an accepted fact. The pens are not suitable for foals. During winter, we find them frozen to the ground. During summer, we see them sick in the dust. Dead horses of all ages are commonplace. Our horses are raised with traceability and animal welfare in mind, ensuring they meet the strictest Canadian regulations. That's a claim we've been investigating. 50% of the horses come from the US. Multiple changes of ownership are normal. Many are traded at auction. There are no horse passports like the ones in the EU and Switzerland, in which medicaments are recorded. Instead, there are affidavits from previous owners, who are the people who make money from selling the horses. Auctions like this one show that horses in poor condition are bought by kill buyers, which is what slaughter traders are called in the US. Many are not fit to be transported. They shouldn't be here and certainly shouldn't be shipped on from here. Repeated yawning and licking are indicators of pain. Kill buyers also buy sport horses. These should not be slaughtered for human consumption on account of drug residues. Based on the annual sales of phenylbutazone in the United States, every adult horse receives at least one dose of phenylbutazone during its lifetime. The absence of a drug history makes them ineligible for slaughter for human consumption and puts the public at elevated risk. We returned to the Bouvry feedlot eight months later, in April 2023. A noticeable number of pens are empty. Others are overcrowded. Round areas are covered in straw. The straw is contaminated with urine and feces. It serves as both roughage and bedding. The horses are left without protection from the elements. No shelter can be found. Narrow pathways through deep mud. Most of the area is hard for the horses to walk on. We see the same things we saw last year. We see newborn foals again. We see horses in a miserable state. Professor Kremer is concerned about the feet. It's used primarily to fatten the horses. The feed troughs are filled mainly with alfalfa. Alfalfa is rich in protein and is fed to horses that are used for sport or are malnourished. Using alfalfa for fattening endangers the health of horses and puts stress on their kidneys and livers. Potential consequences include a weakened immune system, eczema, allergies, diarrhea and swollen legs. The consequences of overfeeding can be seen everywhere. The horses shown are massively overweight. Excess feed overburdens their sensitive metabolisms and can cause life-threatening illnesses, primarily laminitis and equine metabolic syndrome, or EMS. Laminitis is a very painful inflammation which requires treatment. EMS is a disorder of the fat and insulin metabolism. It causes reluctance to move, apathy, changes to the coat, and an increased risk of infection. Large, heavy draft horses. Nearly all of them have pain in the legs. Over 2,200 pounds supported by sick hooves. Professor Kremer considers this generally problematic. The black stallion is suffering from severe pain and is extremely lame. He stops moving by suddenly lying down, probably to get relief from the burden.
getting up is difficult and painful. We count 132 horses in this overcrowded pen. Some of them urgently need to be separated. In full pens, the playful behavior of young horses can endanger their sick, injured and weakened companions. They stand in deep mud, drenched with urine and feces. This soil is poison for their sick hooves. They need healthy, well-maintained hooves to bear their weight and healthy legs. Professor Krämer suspects that this horse has an untreated impact injury. The skin has been subject to inflammatory changes and proud flesh can be seen. If the wound isn't treated and the horse isn't medicated, Systemic infection can occur that affect the whole horse. The horse can also die of tetanus if it isn't vaccinated. All Swiss retailers and many in Belgium and France have stopped importing Bouvry horse meat in the last 10 years. In 2013, Bouvry promised regular hoof care, among other things. As of today, there is still no sign of it. Hoof care is not a luxury. Hooves carry a horse's weight. Only a few inches are horn. The rest is blood-filled tissue which is sensitive to pain. Lack of hoof care makes horses ill and can be fatal. In a crowded pen, we discover a grey and a brown mare. We watch them for a while. Both are in a lot of pain. We asked Professor Krämer if this could be related to their overlong hooves. These horses' hooves are extremely neglected. They are what we call big shaped. They are curled up, a condition that puts excessive stress on the fetlocks. Lack of hoof care causes pain and without a doubt is an animal welfare violation. Both of them are constantly harassed by other horses. The grey tries to avoid them, but the brown mare doesn't move. Every step hurts. The mare doesn't even respond to being kicked in the belly. Professor Krämer believes she is in distress. She avoids walking a single step. Her splayed forelegs are typical of laminators. The hooves are in very bad condition, which puts even more stress on her. She's clearly in considerable pain. She should be separated and given emergency treatment. No medical help despite severe pain. Normally, phenylbutazone would be given to treat the pain. However, EU regulations do not allow this medication if the horse is destined for human consumption. The results are devastating. Horses are left to suffer for six months or more. The manager of the Bouvry feedlot is aware of the problem. Phenylbutazone isn't an option for horses going to slaughter. Their condition gets worse as they get heavier, but we can't treat them because of the EU program. We suspect that these young horses have skin diseases as a result of poor husbandry. Professor Krämer confirms our suspicions. This is very likely to be a fungal skin infection. Stress, a weak immune system and other underlying diseases favor such a condition. Stallions and mares are mixed. This causes more stress and pregnancies with dire consequences. If the foals aren't born, they suffocate during the slaughter. If they are born, many die because the conditions are hostile to foals. Responsible horse breeders would never allow such torture. Skin packing, however, says that the Bouvry farm in Alberta is without a doubt the most appropriate, respectful horse breeding farm in the world. Neither do EU importers see any reason to stop imports from a supplier that doesn't even maintain minimum standards of respectful husbandry. We ask Professor Krämer for a general assessment of the way Bouvry keeps its horses. This is actually the opposite of animal welfare. Anyone who keeps animals, cares for animals or has the duty of care must have the necessary expertise. 
These animals aren't fed properly or given care. Their health is intentionally jeopardized. Depriving the horses of medical treatment is also a willful act, just so that their meat can be exported. The indifference regarding the suffering of these horses is truly revolting. That's why it's time to stop imports of horse meat from Canada, so that the torture ends.